Journey to the End of the Earth Earlier this year, the narrator says that she started her journey to Antarctica aboard the Russian research vessel, Academic Shukhalsky. Let's move further, but first do subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like and share this video. This journey took the narrator to the coldest, driest and windiest continent on earth. Her journey began in Madras, located 13.09 degrees north of the equator. The trip involved crossing nine time zones, six checkpoints, three bodies of water and several ecosystems. By the time she set foot on the Antarctic continent, she had traveled for over 100 hours using a combination of car, airplane and ship. Her initial emotion upon seeing Antarctica's expensive white landscape and uninterrupted blue horizon was relief, followed by profound wonder at its immensity isolation and the historical connection between India and Antarctica. Approximately 650 million years ago, a giant southern supercontinent called Gondwana existed around present-day Antarctica. During this era, the climate was much warmer, supporting a wide variety of flora and fauna. Gondwana thrived for 500 million years, but when the dinosaurs were wiped out and the age of mammals began, the landmass started to break apart, eventually forming the globe as we know it today. Visiting Antarctica today means becoming part of this history, understanding where humanity comes from and where it might go. It involves grasping the significance of geological features, climate elements and evolutionary events. Reflecting on the changes that occur over millions of years can be mind-boggling, such as India pushing northwards to form the Himalayas, or South America drifting to create the cold circumpolar current around Antarctica. For someone like the narrator, a sun-loving South Indian spending two weeks in a place that stores 90% of the Earth's total ice volumes was chilling, not just for uh, circulatory and metabolic functions, but also for the imagination. Antarctica felt like walking on a giant ping-pong ball, devoid of any human markers. No trees, billboards or buildings. In this desolate landscape, she lost her earthly sense of perspective and time. The visual scale ranged from microscopic midges and mites to massive blue whales and icebergs the size of countries. The days blended into each other under uh, the surreal 24-hour austral summer light with the pervasive silence only occasionally broken by an avalanche or a calving ice sheet. This immersion forced her to place herself in the context of Earth's geological history and the prognosis for humans is not promising. The future of a humans does not seem to be promising. Human civilizations have only been around for about 12,000 years, barely a bit on uh, the geological clock. In this short time, humanity has caused significant disruption, dominating nature with villages, towns, cities and megacities. Rapid population growth has left humans battling other species for limited resources and the unchecked burning of fossil fuels has created a blanket of carbon dioxide around the world. Slowly but surely increasing the average global temperature. 
Climate change is one of the most hotly contested environmental debates of our time. Will the West Antarctic ice sheet completely melt? Will the Gulf Stream ocean current be disrupted? Will this be the end of the world as we know it? Maybe or maybe not. Either way, Antarctica is crucial to this debate. Not just because it has never sustained a human population and remains relatively pristine, but more importantly because it traps half million year old carbon records in its ice cores. To study and examine Earth's past, present and future, Antarctica is the best place to go. The Students on Ice program which the narrative was part of on the Shokalski aims to provide high school students with life-changing educational opportunities that foster a new understanding and respect for our planet. Headed by Canadian Jeff Green, who grew tired of catering to celebrities and uh, the retired rich curiosity seekers, the program focuses on inspiring the future generation of policy makers. The success of the program lies in the fact that it is impossible to go near the South Pole and to be affected, while people can sit comfortably in their homes, being blazed about melting polar ice caps, seeing glaciers retreat and ice shelves collapse in person makes you realize the real threat of global warming. Antarctica with its simple ecosystem and lack of biodiversity is the perfect place to study how small changes in the environment can have significant repercussions. Take phytoplankton. The grasses of the sea that nourish and sustain the entire southern ocean's food change. These single-celled plants use the sun's energy to assimilate carbon and synthesize organic compounds through photosynthesis. Scientists warn that a further depletion of the ozone layer will affect phytoplankton activities impacting all marine animals and birds in the region and the global carbon cycle. The narrator's Antarctic experience was filled with epiphanies. But the best moment came just short of uh, the Antarctic Circle at 65.55 degrees south. The Shukalski got wedged in a thick white stretch of ice between the peninsula and Tadpole Island, preventing them from moving forward. The captain decided to turn back north, but first they were instructed to walk on the ocean. All 52 people, equipped with Gore-Tex and sunglasses, walked on the stark whiteness that seemed to spread endlessly. Under their feet was a meter-thick ice pack and below that 180 meters of living, breathing salt water. Around them, crab-eater seals stretched and sunned themselves on the ice floors, just like stray dogs under a bunion tree's shade. It was a revelation. Everything is indeed connected. After crossing nine time zones, six checkpoints, three bodies of water, and several ecosystems, the narrator continued to marvel at the planet's beauty and balance. What if Antarctica became warm again as it once was? Would humanity be around to see it? Or would we have vanished like the dinosaurs, mammoths, and woolly rhinos? Who can say? But after spending two weeks with a bunch of teenagers who still hold on to uh, the idealism of saving the world, the narrator could only conclude that while a lot can happen in a million years, a single day can make all the difference. This is the end of this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.